Hey, how are you today? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chicago's Discount Salon. Welcome. We have all the chairs and everything you could ever want here. Hmm. So welcome. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> today's video. Thank you for watching this with me for the first time. This is a premiere video. And in these videos, I am down below watching this video right along with you. So if you have anything or any questions you want to ask me or comments, go ahead because I'm right down here with you. Um, and we are watching this for the first time together. So today's video is about how to keep up, keeping up, like you said, keeping up with the Kardashians, keeping up with the discounts belongs. How do we do that? Hmm. That's a good one, right? How do we keep up with the discount salons? Want to know the real answer? The answer is you don't keep up with these type of places unless you want to, but you do not have to keep up with these type of places because this is a totally different thing from what we're trying to do, what I think you're trying to do if you are watching this channel. Um these are what we call discount salons. They are exactly that. They run and they do nails. It's a it's a nail mill. It's a place where it's not about branding. It's not about building long-term clientele. It's just basically a factory type setup where we are cranking people in and out for whatever they want to the best of our ability. And if they come back, they do. They don't, they don't. And that's basically what we're seeing in the discount salons. Now, today... So nowadays, a lot of them are trying to step it up. Some of the higher end ones are trying to step it up. But basically, overall, it's just a thing of cranking people in and out as fast as possible. So I know for a fact that some of you all are comparing, comparing yourselves to them. I just know these things. As a lady should. I know that. Some of you all look at their prices before you place your own prices. And I guess my first question to you guys would be, why do you want to place your prices according to theirs? Do you feel like your service is the same as theirs just because you both do nails? Hmm? You guys, I want you to think about that. Just because you both do nails, when you're looking at them and trying to practice or have the same prices as them, do you feel like your work is in alignment with theirs or do you feel like it's better? I know for a fact that my work is way better than most discount salons because I'm taking my time. I'm using quality products. I'm using uh, my skill, my technique and all of that to tailor it to each individual person. And I'm just overall giving better customer service. So why would I look at them when I'm trying to price my services? I, I can't tell you the last time I, I've looked at their prices because I don't go off of that, nor I've been around longer than them. So that's why I don't look at that. <laughs> um, but for those of you all who, for those of you who are doing that, please stop. You know how much you should be charging and you charge exactly what you want to charge because places like this are just charging to get the masses the masses in and out. Keep that in mind. They are charging for what? The masses. They charge for the masses, meaning that they don't really care if a person comes back or not. Some of them try to get people, but for the most part, they are charging for the masses. The masses. Whatever price can get people in their chair. Most of us as career nail techs, we want to, and this should not be up there, but that's okay. Most of, most of us, we want, we want to get a clientele at a price that we know that we are worth and we want them to continue to come back. So we're trying to create a whole experience, right? And we want people, we want to learn the people that come in our chair. So we, we can look at our day and say, okay, we know kind of what it looks like because we get to know our clients. When you these places like this, they don't really care to know your name. They may ask to know your name just to be polite, but it's not a, it's not set up to be a continuous relationship. It's more of a run of the mill type of thing. So why do we want to keep up with them? Why do we worry about what they're doing? Let's think about the type of clients that come through these places. 
I myself, if I'm in a very, very hard pinch of out of town or something, I have gone to these places. But when you look around, these there is no relationships being built. I've worked in these places. There are no relationships being built. It's all about numbers. It's all about cranking in, cranking out. It's all about volume, 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 volume. It's all about money, which we all want money. But for them, they're, they don't care if the money is not coming from any particular group of people. Now, if you don't want a clientele, then this model is something that you might want to keep up with. But for those of us who want a steady clientele to know exactly what our money is looking like and what our day looks like, this is not something to aspire to. This is not. Okay. We want to provide high-end quality services, high-end quality products, provide all the latest design work and know our clients and to ask how their kids are doing, you know, ask about their surgery, what's going on. You know, we just want to make a different type of bond. So keeping up with discount salons is not something we want to do. Just think about it. I think we worry about discount salons because they always seem busy. I can guarantee you from working in about I don't know how many, four or five in three different states, they're not always busy. The thing that gets a lot of us is that they look busy because there's always a lot of them working. And so majority of the time, it's at least nine. I've been in a place where it's been up to 22 of us working. So if one, if 60 or 70% of those people have at least one person in their chair, it looks busier than what it is. But if you really, 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 really stop to think about this, and I'm about to say something, if you really stop to think about what I'm about to say, you'll see that they're not as busy and you won't feel as intimidated or feel such a hard need to compare yourself. If you watch my channel, you already know what I'm about to do. When you look in these salons, I don't care if you look at a place that's like super busy. Let's say there are 15 nail techs working at this busy salon. Super busy, super, super busy. And it looks busy because everyone has someone. And then there are even like six or seven people sitting up front. They're not as busy as you. They're busy. But they're really just steady because those are just 15 clients sitting in 15 technicians chair and six or seven people waiting. But out of those 15, when half of them are finished, they may not have a client right away. How do I know this? Because I've worked in them many a times and it's not as busy as you think because there are always a lot of people working. So there's always an illusion that there's a lot of business flowing through there. But the only person who's really busy is the owner. The owner is always busy making money. But the technicians are on a rotation. They're on a rotation. And so they're not always busy because they can. I can finish up this pedicure, but there are six people in front of me on the rotation. And so I finished up my person, but I was number, let's say I was number 14 out of those 15 people to get a person. Let me explain this. I was number 14 out of 15 to get a person. So I did this pedicure. That's all I have was a pedicure. I'm done with the pedicure. There are six people sitting up front, but I'm not the next in the rotation. So the people in front of me will get those next people before me. You get what I'm saying? So I got to go sit in the back or I got to go find something to do until more people come in until I come up on the rotation again. However, to the outside eye, it looks super busy. But that doesn't mean that each individual technician is making all this money unless they have built clientele, which some of them may have. I do not want people comparing themselves to the discount salons. Also, they're not making as much because they're on commission. And the commission is usually a 60-40 split. So they're already doing things really, really cheap. And let's just, let's just take this number, for example. They're just, they're not known to do a lot of design. So most of them are just doing, let's say, full sets and fillings. A full set, on average, there may be 30, let's just say 40, we're going to go $30, okay? A $30 set, but they're only getting 60%. So they just made $24, but they worked on them for an hour, hour and 20 minutes or whatever. I don't know. Let's just say an hour. So they made 
12, 12, 24 dollars. They made 24 dollars. But again, we talk about that rotation thing. So they did the full set and they're finished with the full set. But now they got to wait because the rotation may be may not be back around to them. Depends on how the salon does it. So I'm going to say to you, don't feel like you're doing something wrong because they everyone in there looks like they're making so much money. That is not always the case. That is not always the case. And they have to do double the work to make the amount of money because you are making all of your money and they have they're on a commission split. So keep those things in mind when trying to compare yourself and keep up with the discount salons. The discount salon is more about volume and we're more on this end about quality. So the amount that they may make off of three people, you can make it off of one person if you play your cards right, you guys. And so that is where this right here comes in. And I have designed this workbook and it helps you to brand yourself and to understand what it is you're trying to do and who you're trying to target and how to get there. It's the 30 day nail technician boot camp challenge. I always do that. And this book right here gets you started. It's a 30 day challenge and you have week by week assignments. But um, enough about that. Understand that this right here, don't let this back here deter you from uh, moving forward in your career and thinking that you're not doing something right. This is a totally different business model from what we want to do as career nail techs. We want to work smart and not hard. And that's where this right here comes in, working smart and not hard, understanding exactly what you're doing. Because if you're trying to do this back here, you're going to end up with a lot of frustration and a lot of people hopping in and out of your chair. And that's what discount salons do. That's what they want, people hopping in and out of their chair. We don't want that. So stay tuned. Be sure you subscribe and share this video, like this video, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. A lot of you all are saying that you don't get my notifications when I'm going live. Make sure you, you hit that bell. You'll know it'll give you an advance on it. And make sure you check out Chicago Beauty Source, which is right there for things like this. And... I always do that. Like this, the 30-day nail technician challenge. You get what I'm saying. The 30-day nail technician challenge. So check out Chicago Beauty Source as well. And I will catch you guys in the next live and join our case studies. All of this good stuff. Okay? All righty. Bye.